Hi, I'd like to talk about Xcode today, and the subject I'd like to talk about is using view controllers um, without segues. So you can see I have an app here. Um, it's got a you know an empty view controller here with the entry point, and then there's a bunch of other view controllers that are set up, you know, in Storyboard here, each with their different content. And uh, none of them are connected with any segues. Um, so let's see how this works. If I, um, you know, hit the play button here to test my app in the simulator, and it builds in the simulator here. I gotta wait for it to build. And there it is, right? So it loads up here. And the first thing that happens is the app builds a UI page view controller. Actually, I did this in this example, I did that in code. And then in the page view controller, it grabs this view controller here and adds it as the first page. Okay? And then, you know, I can swipe to go to the second page, which we see here. And then, you know, you can imagine that if I swipe again, I'm going to go to the next page. And then there's another page, right? And imagine that this might be, you know, an onboarding that your app is using. I don't know why, you know, let me take a break here. I don't know why I get this little gap here when I go back a page, but when I go forward, it works just fine. Is that a bug, a feature, or did I do something wrong? I can't decide. Um, but anyway, you know, it mostly works here, right? I'm not quite sure about this gap, but, uh, but anyway, when we get to the last page here, there's a button that says done. And when I when I tap on that button, it takes me to this view controller here, okay? And the way that this works is it works by using um, view controllers in Storyboard and by assigning each of these view controllers a, um, a Storyboard ID and a Restoration ID. And the way that that is set up here in the Xcode interface is that when you select a view controller and go to the Identity Inspector, the little newspaper here, um, there's an identity field, right? And in the identity field, there's a storyboard ID. You know, I think it's best practice to just name this with the name of the view controller that is controlling that view, right? And then... Uh, and then below this storyboard ID, there's another thing. It's called restoration ID. And you can give this another value. As far as I can tell, you can't get this value in code, but you can get the storyboard ID, uh, ID from code. So um, it seems like a good idea to check this box, and then that makes them both the same value, right? Because without that checked, you, you, know, you can type in another name here. Um, and so the way that I used it, I checked this box so that, um, you know, I want to check in, in code. I might ask, like, which view controller is currently on display. And I can check the storyboard ID that way in code. And so I can get this name here, right? Um, and you can see all of these view controllers down here. They have the same setup. So they've got a storyboard ID. And then I check the use storyboard ID down here for the restoration ID. So these are just called page one, page two, page three, right? This is page three here and page four, right? Um, and, and this first view, this is my main view controller, right? So what's going to happen is this view controller is going to load a child view controller, right? And so essentially it'll take this view controller and, you know, imagine it as being on top of this one, right? Okay, kind of add it as a child. And the thing about the views here is that uh, they have a, you know, you have a view controller which has a bunch of code that runs the view, but the actual visible part of the view controller is the view. So in order to work with the child view controller, you have to add the child view controller to, your, to the current view controller and then also add the view as a subview. Otherwise, you don't see the subview. Okay, so, um, you know, I'll do that. I'll do that in a, in a moment, right? But why don't we remake this example here, right? And then we'll, um, we'll kind of, you know, explore the ideas through, through the example. Um, so just to get started, we'll just set up storyboard and make, um, and make a little storyboard thing, right? So I'm going to close this one and then make a new file and it'll be a single view application 
and I'll call it, um, you know, child view controllers. And, you know, we don't need, we'll use Swift as the language, iPhone as the device, and we don't need any of these um, items, core data or unit tests or anything. So we'll click Next, and I have a folder called uh, UI view controllers or view controllers, right? So I put all my view controller examples in here. So I'm going to save this one to that folder. Okay, so there's the view controller setup, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into main storyboard here. And to make things easy, I'm going to shrink this view here a little bit so it's a little smaller. Yeah, there we go, right? And let's add another view controller. So I'm going to go down to the object palette here, and the very first item is view controller. And this is essentially a UI view controller just like what you see here. So I'll drag this into the view, and then maybe I'll set the size again to um, 3.5 inch. And then you can put um, you know, a text label in here to maybe identify this. Maybe I'll drag it to the center there and bump the text up a little bit here. And there we go, right? And so I'll call this, um, I'll call this about uh, page, you know, one, right? And uh, maybe we'll put a uh, an image in the background here. So I'm going to grab the uh, UI image view here, and I'll fit it into the view like this. And right now the label will be underneath the the image view right because it's down here so I'm gonna drag the label up above like that so if I put a picture in here then um, you know it'll the the label will be on top right so we'll save that and uh, now we need a picture so um, you know I have some pictures here on my desktop maybe I'll I'll import these I'll just drag them in here like this and there they are right and if you want to organize these you can click on them and, you know, right click and choose uh, new group from selection. And that'll organize them all into a folder. I'll call it images. Okay. And uh, so here we are. So I've got my picture there. So I'll click on the image view. I can see the image view is selected here. And from the image option here under properties, I can choose one of the pictures that I imported. So I'll choose this picture here. The label doesn't stand out very well here, so maybe um, maybe I'll make it a little bigger. You can use Command Equal to make the size of the label fit the text exactly. So, so I'll do this. I'll call that page one. And now what we'll need is we'll need a couple more pages. So let's make a few more pages. Um, let me expand this a little bit here. And just to make things fast, um, you know, you could make a new view controller for each one of these. But what I think I'll do is I'll click on the view controller up here so it has the blue outline. And then I know that it's selected. And I'll do Command-C to copy and Command-V to paste. And it doesn't look like anything happened. Um, let me paste again. Because <laughs> nothing happened. Um, let me copy that again and... Uh, maybe I have to click outside here and paste. Yeah, there we go, right? So now I've got two of these, right? So so you just work out that copy and paste thing. Okay, I'm still fumbling at it, right? But uh, but anyway, so there, there I've got the copy and paste, and uh, there's two view controllers, right? So for the second one here, maybe I'll call this, you know, page two. I'll give it a really creative name. And then uh, this image here, maybe I'll, I'll click on the image view and switch it to another picture. Okay, and then let's repeat the process. So I'll click out here and paste, and I'll move this view. Maybe I'll just m put them all in a row, right? And then we can repeat the process here. We'll call this um, page number three, and um, and I'll click on the view here, and I'll choose a different picture. Well, I can't see that text there. Why don't we make the text white in this case? Maybe 
can move this somewhere else, maybe down here, right? That looks pretty good. And then, uh, you know, maybe I'll paste again and make another view here and drag it over here. And there we go. Now we've got four pages. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll switch the image again. And there we go, right? So there's my page four. You know, and you could move these things around, um, you know, if you wanted to change it. Maybe I'll move um, this label down here. Um, maybe I should change the text on that one, too. I think it reads better as white. And, uh, yeah, maybe that's good, right? Okay, so none of these views are are connected with segues, right? So we're going to have to load them up with um, with code, right? Um, in order to do that, each one of the views needs to have an identifier, right? A way that we can call it up from storyboard and name, right? Or by its name, right? So uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll click on, I'll, I'll go through each of the four of these and repeat the process, right? But on the first one here, I'll click on it and um, when I go to the identity inspector, you can see it says storyboard ID. And what I'll do is I'll call it page one view controller, okay? Um, and then I'll check the box here for use uh, storyboard ID for the restoration ID, okay? And then I'll go to the second view controller and I'll call it page two view controller, okay? And then we'll check the box. And then we'll go to page three here and call it page three view controller. And again, check the box. And then for the last page, um, we'll type it in here, page four uh, view controller and then we'll check the use storyboard ID box, okay? And maybe on this last page, we'll, um, we'll add a button. So maybe, you know, when you get through all these pages, you wanna tap this button to go to another um, scene or something, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the button here and drag it, maybe I'll place it in the middle here, and then I'll set the text color, I'll make it white, okay? And maybe I'll just make the button say, you know, done or something, right? Okay, so there we go, that's a pretty good setup. So, uh, you know, we had another thing to do here before we can move on. Um, we've got our views set up, but we don't have any constraints. So if we loaded these views up, you know, everything would be exactly where it is, even if the screen changed sizes for different devices. So let's add some constraints. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to use the default constraints for the label and the button on the last um, view. But for the image view, um, I'm going to constrain the edges, the four sides. I think where the default keeps this at height and width, it doesn't, um, when you use it in the image view, it doesn't, you know, make it, you know, um, uh, fit to the edges, right? So, so for the image view here, I'll choose um, to pin the four edges here. And you can turn this thing off if you want. I don't think it really matters, but uh, I'll do that. And then for the other views, um, I'll just click on the, the text there and choose Add Missing Constraints. Mm, looks like it locked it to the corner, which is pretty good. And then uh, again, I'll click on the image view in the center there and then click on all four of the little bars here to lock the four edges, right? Okay, so we'll do that, and then, oh yeah, we forgot, I gotta do the label here, and then we'll do the label, I'll just say add missing constraints, and that should fit this pretty good, and then uh, on this one, we'll repeat the process, do the four sides, add four constraints, and then on the label here, I'll just choose add missing constraints. Or you could constrain this too if you wanted. I'm just kind of, you know, taking a shortcut there. 
and then uh, maybe I'll do it backwards this time. I'll, I'll choose both the button and the label and choose add missing constraints and then I'll click on the background here the the image view and I'll choose um, you know to pin the four sides okay now you may notice that the images here are a little bit out of proportion it's hard to tell this one looks pretty good but these look a little bit squashed right um, so right now when I assign the images to the image view they they get the default mode right here I'm on the property inspector right it says scale to fill so scale means it's gonna scale the image like it's gonna be you know changing its proportions right and what I want to do is I'm gonna switch these to um, aspect fill okay and aspect fill means keep the aspect ratio in other words don't change the aspect ratio when you scale right so these are actually gonna scale too but they're going to um, scale proportionally so in this case some of the image will be will bleed off the edges we won't see the whole picture in these it's trying to fit the picture into the view and since the proportion of the view doesn't match the proportion of the image they get they get a little bit out of whack right so I'll click on this one here and choose um, aspect fill and then I'll click on this one and choose uh, you know aspect fill again right so anyway so there we go um, so I'll save all that <coughs> and I think that looks pretty good so why don't we stop this video here and then in the next video we'll do some of the code to get these things to show up on the screen okay thanks for watching